In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I added that perfect summer touch to my kitchen using picnic inspiration. Now let's make an ant. So with my balloon weights, the bottom pieces that I had left over from my 4th of July firecracker craft I did, I decided I was going to use these and create an ant. I have three of them in total and that's what they look like when you take them out of the package. And what I did is I just took scrap fabric I got here. This is in a grayish color and I'm just going to completely cover my circles with my hot glue here. Now don't do it on a paper towel because you're going to see why. That's why I brought out my green mat that I didn't use. A chunk of paper towel stuck to it, but that's fine. It gets covered up. I didn't even bother completely peeling it off. So I just roll up my little circles here, my balloon weights, and my fabric. And I rolled them all different. Like, not a single one of them was rolled the same. Like, this one had a little gapage in the back, which was fine. I just went in and covered that with a little piece of fabric and here's a little trick so you don't burn yourself I applied the hot glue to the stone piece first and then just tapped it down and for this particular circle I didn't even cut it I went in and just hot glued those corners down so I wanted to make these kind of like stick out so what I did is I took and measured my circle there and what I'm going to do is split that in half once I measured. And that's exactly how I measured so I can make sure it would fit around the whole thing. I measured it. And I want to add that fabric there. I fold it in half to go around the circumference. And to glue that without getting burnt, I put my hot glue on my strip. And I'm just going to roll my disc kind of onto it and just put it the whole way around. I did that to all three of them. And then I went in and used my scissors to kind of tap down the edge so I wouldn't get burnt, but that wasn't the greatest idea. Don't use scissors for this. And for this one with that little gap, I took my hot glue and put on the back of that square. And then I do use my scissors to kind of make it blend by just kind of scrunching it. And that's gonna be the back side of it, which was cute. So, I'm just going in here with my acrylic paints because we need a face. So for his eyes, I just used my white acrylic paint and kind of went in and just freehanded two long wannabe oval shapes. Definitely not the most perfect. And I ended up doing two coats of my white paint on the eyes. I let the first coat dry and then went in once it was dry and gave it the second coat. But while my eyes are drying, I'm going in with this Dollar Tree stencil brush and some pink paint. And I'm dabbing off some of that pink that under my paper towel. And we're going to give them some cheeks. I first just kind of dab on there where I kind of want the shapeage of his cheeks. Just like this. Then what I do, since I'm using a dark fabric, I went in with my stencil brush and my white paint and kind of dobbled over the pink cheeks I just created with my white. And then I go back in with the pink to put it over top so it will really pop. So I go and grab my Sharpie because he needs a little smile. Or she, I mean. It's a girl. <laughs> so I just go in and freehand a little big U shape and then add a little half a C over there to give it some life, more expression. And I doubled over very lightly with my paint. Now for the legs, I only did one side set of legs and I made those out of paper clips and some scrap fabric that I just took and like this, I'm, I just cut that smaller into smaller little strips 
and I just ripped it so it would have that fray effect. So to create the legs, <clears throat> I just kind of open up my paper clip and I leave that one end as is, kind of. I didn't mess with the one end because that's how I am going to insert this into my fabric over there. And that would be like the base that stabilizes it. So I just kind of make a funky shape like a leg. I have no idea an ant leg, what it actually looks like. But I just made mine cute. So what I did is I just put a dab of hot glue on my fabric. And I carefully pinched it there at the end. And I, so I don't like get poked or scratched. I covered up the pointy piece that was sticking out of the paper clip. And all I'm going to do is wrap my fabric around my finger here and go around this paper clip. Two thousand years later. And once I reach the end piece here, I leave it thicker because that's how, once I stab it down in, you'll see. That's going to be where I hot glue for extra security. So I very carefully did this. I believe I did get burnt, actually. Someday I will own a silicone little finger shield thing. So this is just how I did the end. I pinched it together. And you'll see it's thicker. And then how that hot glue was just kind of sticking out. I think that's when I got burnt. So to stab it down into my fabric here, I just bend my paper clip back and forth to get a pointy edge. And then I stab it into this fabric. But first I want to hurry up and get some antennas made. And I used for my picture hanging kit that wire. I just folded it in half so they're equal. And I'm going to cut that in half. I use my little sharpie here and just kind of wrap it around to each one of them. So... Set those aside, and now I'm going to go in and give the blacks to my eyes. <laughs> Using my little paintbrush here. <laughs> One on each side. And my butterfingers accidentally dropped it. But it's fine. So here's how I installed the legs. Like I said, I stabbed that down through the fabric. Just like that. And then where I left that piece thicker at the end, that's where I'm going to apply my hot glue for the extra security to hold it in place. And it does hold. It's pretty sturdy. So to fix my screw up of his eyes, I just go in with the end of my paintbrush and give two white dots. And since this is the queen ant, a female, a lady, I'm going to just go in with some scrap fabric and create a messy bow. I'm not a professional bow maker. There is a bunch of tutorials how to make bows online. But um, I can make a messy bow. So I just took random pieces of scrap fabric, slapped them on each other. And then it was a little long on the one side. And I just kind of fixed it by curving my cut there as I cut around the bow. And perfect. Then it does take some finesse and finagling. Just move it around. And I garnished it with a button in the middle at the very end. So I'm just going to hot glue this on. And what I did too is I added a couple pieces of hot glue around its eyes. Or I mean the face. So it would really stick. But first let's get these antennas on. I have a little gap here because when I rolled my fabric around them, I didn't do it completely straight on purpose. I wanted that dimension look. So that worked in my favor because that's where I insert my antenna on this side and just hold that down for a few seconds. And here's what I meant about gluing the bow down to like more of its face. I just take my hot glue gun and put a little line of hot glue and where I want the bow to come more onto the face, I just hold that piece of fabric down onto it. And 
And here she is in her glory. I did go in and give her two little eyelashes on the one side with my Sharpie. And I made a little fabric watermelon there with scrap fabric that I had. And I outlined the whites of her eyes in my Sharpie. And it does stand on its own. Now, next up, what here pops out the most to you? Was it that watermelon? Would you believe me if I told you that this is foam? No. So I have two long pieces of foam that is from a bathroom vanity. And they're kind of like triangular shape. So what I did is I went in and hacked off a little of the length. And I put those pieces aside because I'm going to make a craft out of them coming up. So I ever so dangerously go in with my scissors and start hacking. Sawing at it basically. And I made the one piece a little shorter than the other purposely. And I just took my hot glue and glued each of the seams together. Just like that. And I even added a bead of hot glue down the whole seam on the outside, on the one side, just so it'd be extra secure. And what I already did off camera is I just went in and painted it a dark green on the back for the rind. And I mixed a red and a pink color and colored that whole inside. And if you can tell on the watermelon, the front there, it had a chunk out of it. I wanted it to look like it had a bite. But what I'm doing now is with my white acrylic paint, I'm just going in with my stencil brush and dabbing, oh, dabbing down the whole side there where the pink and the green's going to meet. And I do that to both sides. And this foam has them circles like already indented in them. And I'm not hating it. I actually like it. So I do the same once that white's dry with my spring green color here and if you need to ever make a darker green and don't have it if you just add a little bit of blue to your light green that will darken up your green shade if you need a dark color little hack there if you didn't know your color and as the light green was drying I did I went over it with that dark green color I just made and I kind of did this method of different on each side because I made this like turnable and it looks different on each. You'll see it's very end. So I just keep dobbling. Getting where any of that light green might have went where I didn't want it. Just like that. And I did color the inside what you could see when it's standing up. So, for the rind, I just go in with my spring green, and this is that little brush that I did the eyes for the ant with, and I'm ever so slightly just making lines up and down, up and down, until there's absolutely no paint left on my brush. And then I go back in and daub, and that will give you that dark effect to light effect, which is pretty crucial. To making it look like a rind. Then I highlight more of that to really emphasize. So, on the one side, like I said, I wanted it like turnable. When you change it one side to the other, it's two different looking watermelons, kind of. So I did the one side in a pinky color. And the base color of it, I mixed the pink and red, if I didn't already say that. But this one I'm going over in my pink shade. Then I just kind of go along the edge there and kind of crisp it up a little. Where the white I went in and did with my stencil brush. Just like this. So, there's still more. I go in and I dry brush more of the spring green over top of 
the dark green and where I went in and did my lines just to give it that extra oomph. And I'm, this technique worked great. I originally actually wanted to do this project with wood. But you can see there the color difference. So when it's up and you can change it one way to the other. So I used my Sharpie and made the little seeds and then I went in with my black paint. And then I give it an outline with some black paint to kind of really make it pop down the different seams of it. And here you can see more of the color contrast difference that I did. So if I want to red the one day, just face it this way. Voila! And if you see in the background any craft you like, be sure to check out my playlist. So next up with our scraps from that melon post. I have these little triangle looking pieces that will make the perfect melon. So I take and I trace to cover each side with this cardboard. And then I take it and I flip it over so I can do the rind part because it's going to kind of sit on its side. And I trace the rectangle for that. You can clearly see it's not a perfect rectangle. And when I go to cut them, I cut them more at a point at the end so they won't turn curved like that one. And here they are. Then I just go in with my hot glue on low and I'm just going to hot glue these pieces of cardboard to each side. Bam, bam. Then I just make sure my top piece will still fit as the rind. And all I did was covered this in fabric as if I was wrapping a gift and I used my hot glue just like that then I take a piece of my white muslin fabric and give an outline to the inner pieces here like this measure cut and I hot glue it kind of fold it in half I do on the outside and then I hot glue it to the inside just like this And then for my rind, I had strip green fabric that I just took and kind of overlapped on each other. And I did overlap the fabric to the cardboard. And I'm just going to hot glue that on. And I go in with the green there and kind of put a little over the white with some hot glue. And I close up that seam there with a the fabric since I overlapped it with a strip of hot glue. And I just ever so easily go and just kind of pinch that down. So you can't see that there's a piece of cardboard in it. I then just go in with some of that gray fabric from my aunt. Cut out like little C looking wannabe things and just hot glue them babies on. And here's how it's looking. This would be so cute just setting anywhere in your house actually for summer I then just go in and create my dimension with a little bit of black and I just kind of outline the triangle shape there and then I go over the top here with a dry brush method like barely no paint on my brush and just kind of hit up the rind to give it that rind look which I think I killed that looks good I think So my next craft involves some air dry clay and I have out some little square parchment paper pieces and a little shot glass of water to dip my finger in. So I just take and condition my air dry clay and I put it into a ball, rolled it into a ball. Then I kind of just took it between my two hands and start shaping the strawberry. I use my palms to do all the work to create that shape and for it to stand I wanted to make sure the bottom was flat and I'm not gonna lie it took me a couple times to get it how I wanted it and the main thing here is I just made sure it stood at the end so once I get both of them there I'm just gonna leave them 
on my parchment paper here to dry. And here on this one, you can see I'm going in and just dipping my finger in my little shot glass of water and ever so slightly just applying some water to smooth it out. It is a very messy process. So, my fingers were pretty bad at the end of it. I even had it on my legs somehow. But I just go in and smooth it while trying to keep that shape. Now, a real strawberry is not a perfect shape whatsoever. I know. I've worked produce. So, I'm using this old cuticle pusher thing. And I'm just going to go in and create some effect by poking it in and kind of scooping away a little bit of that. And that's where your wet finger comes in handy to just wipe that smooth in. You'll see. Just kind of like that. And like I said, we want to keep that shape. So just keep shaping it as you go. So once I let these set for a few hours, I went in and we're going to hollow it out. I use that bottom of the glass just as a reference. And I'm using this handy tool from Dollar Tree. It was actually for wood cutting or something. But I'm just going to go in and hollow this out so it doesn't take five years to dry. And it's going to be a planter, obviously. Now, you can just make a full strawberry if you want for a little knick-knack. But that will definitely take forever to dry. The outside might be dry, but that inside definitely wouldn't be. But these are going to be my little strawberry planters, so let's hollow these out. And with what I was hollowing out, I just put right back in my air dry container and sealed it up. Nothing was wasted. Then you can just kind of reform on the inside if you don't want all them ridges showing. And I opted to paint mine red, obviously like a strawberry. And at first I just went in with this Dollar Tree acrylic I had. Because I didn't think I had enough apple barrel real red. So I gave it a coat of that. Actually, I gave it like three coats of the Dollar Tree. And I Mod Podged it with a gloss. Then, I just opted to go and create some dimension. Now, you can get extra funky if you want like that. But that was a bit too much for my taste. I wanted it muted down. And there's different color shades too you can even do. Like this one's a yellowish green color I created. And then I have that more neon green. And I just ever so slightly used my popsicle stick. And then I blobbed it off with my paper towel. Then, for even more dimension, if you want, you can go in and do white. The white's not a bad look, I guess. But, what I do at the very end is I dry brush this to mute down that big bright red color. And I didn't paint the bottom of this one at this point, but I do at the very end. And, I give it an ever so slight top coat again of red, and you can see... If you look at it close there, the dimension that was created, adding them colors, I'm digging it. So, I just opted to fill these with this moss I got from Dollar Tree, which I freaking absolutely hate the smell of it. It straight up stinks. Ugh. But I hot glued that down in. And then I got a ton of fern, fake fern everywhere. So I just snipped off some pieces and just went to town and created something and added Spanish moss to that one. So what's an ant without a hill and a picnic without chips? So let me show you how I created these potato chips. They were already made. They are from a little kit that George bought me and it has these fake potato chips in it. From Walmart. I just simply mix those colors with Mod Podge in my paint to thicken it. And I just go around each of these chips with some of my burn umber and my little brush here. Some spots I added like a dry brush technique to make it look like it was burnt more onto the chip. And these are going to be my cheddar sour cream ones. 
I also just leave a few of them with nothing. Just plain old like they came. Those to me look like Pringles. So those are going to be Pringles. And I use those to kind of stack up my heel behind. And it gives a color contrast, which I like. So I go over it with my canary yellow then. Slightly just dry brushing to give that highlight effect to like make them look more realistic. And you can see this when I went on harsh. And I'm just going to show you how to just keep working that in until you get an effect like that. And I, at the end too, sprinkled a few with some nutmeg and cinnamon to kind of look like a barbecue potato chip. It's just the cutest little addition to go with my picnic theme.